Yeah. Yeah. People that are excited about it's the things yeah. of God. Uh, <laughs> we got first. We got the first pick this year. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, we serve God around these parts. Uh, Alpha and Omega, He be finished before we start. Uh, the great I am, the one who let us know who we are. Uh, Christ the cardiologist created me a clean heart. Uh, I don't consider nothing this world has showed me, cause God's word is literal, and that ain't what He told me. Hello and welcome to another edition of Word Wednesday. I'm Dana Lynette and thank you for stopping by my channel. Today I have two very special guests, uh, my friends, my family, in the Lord, Mr. and Mrs. Eric and Tuesday Lemon. And um, I'll let them introduce themselves, but we are going to touch on a very timely and important topic in April of 2020. And that topic is why in person, I said in person, <laughs> face to face, <laughs> let me grab your neck, church services are important. And not only that, but they are essential. Um, and that's according to the word of God and from our own personal experiences and perspectives. And so... Mr. and Mrs. Lemon, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Dad. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so if anyone has a problem, I just want you to know he's a minister of the gospel, <laughs> certified on paper, so there you have that, okay? And uh, real quick, I want to read a scripture from the Bible which you are very familiar with, I'm very familiar with, and, and we agree with. Um, it's in Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to read verses 24 and 25. I'm not mad if you get your Bible and put your eyes on it because we all agree that this word is the bottom line and settles any arguments. And let us consider one another to provoke one another unto love and to good works. Verse 25, not, cons not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. I'm going to read that again. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. And that day is the day of the Lord. Jesus is coming back. But till then, friends, um, we need to be in church. So, Mr. and Mrs. Lemon, tell us um, how long you've been saved uh, and how long you've been uh, growing as a viable part of your local ministry. I got born again um, July 2001. And so I have been born again for 19 years now. Woo! Won't we do it? Won't we do it? Won't we do it? <laughs> 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 um, I met my husband as well. Uh, we got married in 2003. You yes. were roommates with Dana when we first hooked up. We were, yeah. I was all oh, matter of fact. <laughs> yeah. I witnessed their hookup live in Living Color. They yeah. legit. Okay. Well, and it was because of her and her looking at this word that drew me. I do do that all the time. You had to. I told you you're part of my testimony. But that is kind of what we're talking about mm -hmm. because I was searching for God. Mm -hmm. I was looking for a church. Yeah. And you invited me mm -hmm. to church. And when I came, I felt the love of God. Mm -hmm. I was... So many people there was coming and loving and hugging on me. And at that point in my life, mm -hmm. I was going through a depression because mm -hmm. I had just had my last abortion. Mm -hmm. And I, I told God, I was like, I need you in my life. Mm -hmm. And so there was so much condemnation, so mm -hmm. much shame, so much guilt that when I came, walked into the church. We walked where? Into the church. You mean you turned on your TV? No, you I didn't do. walk in my living room or my bedroom <laughs> or my phone in my car. I walked into the church. And what happened? And it was just so much love there. Mm. People, I mean, nobody even knew me. I'm looking for you and everybody's giving me hugs. My son, who when I went, you know, he would just, he would never go What's to daycare, mm -hmm. you know, and cry for me. I took him to the nursery and he's, Playing and, and and that is comforting, knowing that I needed to hear a word and I couldn't have him in the service with me being distracted. Mm -hmm. 
as opposed to being at home and kids running around being distracted yeah. or whatever. But the love that mm -hmm. was there that helped me to want to come back yeah. because this is a good place for me. This is a safe place for me to come if I'm feeling down or depressed that I know I am going to feel loved. I am mm -hmm. going to be encouraged. I am going to be ministered to that good. there's hope. So um, I heard you say a couple things that I, I want to point out and make sure that our viewing audience really grab and capture. So you have been like a part of the church for about as long as you've been born again. Mm -hmm. Going on two decades. Yes. She's a young woman now. <laughs> <laughs> so am I, because I was there a little longer than that. <laughs> but um, so so for that long. And then when you when you got there, and this is before you were a mature Christian. There were needs in your life, maybe that you didn't even know were there that were met. Absolutely. And it was through people that you didn't know and would not know otherwise mm -hmm. who loved on you. Mm -hmm. You know, and a, and a hug and a kind word mm -hmm. and um, just the gesture, uh, not the gesture, demeanor, you know, yes. uh, just the love of God exuding from them, mm -hmm. supplying something that you didn't know you needed. Right. And even... Just, I was a, a single mother, mm -hmm. single woman at that time. A good one, too. Yeah. <laughs> and the women's ministry there, that mm -hmm. was very, that was life-changing. That totally. It was made. lit, y'all. It was lit, <laughs> lit times 10. <laughs> it was. Yeah. It was. And, and to be all the way honest, I look forward to going to those meetings more than I did the general service. Because with women... In the past, you get yes. bunch of women together, it's a mess. Nothing but a right. mess. Well, let me, most of the time, people like to gather around people that have the same interests, that that's are like-minded. Mm -hmm. And that's the one of the importance of church is you're getting around and interacting with other people who that's have true. the same goal, same focus, right. with God or whatever. Right. Well, well, for the women's meetings, because, you were she, a she woman, because she was a woman, uh, and the discussion was centered around things maybe that she could relate to yeah, more right. up close and personal. Right. Yeah, yeah. She probably enjoyed that part of it. Well, and two, plus it was ministering straight to exactly mm -hmm. what I was dealing with at that moment. It was like, man, God put me here at this point to help me. They, but, it's like it's, talking to me. But what I know? think she's asking is, could you have gotten that? Just I, if you just flipped the channel and saw that on television. I mean, I could have, but then afterwards, what am I going to do? Like, after the word is being preached, then I can actually go up to that minister and say, hey, this was what I was going through. And then she can even expound even more on a whole nother personal level to me <clears throat> than what I needed, as opposed to me sitting in my living room, sitting here watching you know, on my phone or whatever. And, you know, I could call the prayer helpline, but when you are interacting with a person and they are actually talking to you, mm -hmm. so much more comes it's out. It's true. So much more happens than when, you know, and the prayer helpline is great. All of that is great. That but 502-597-4357 if you need help. <laughs> 597 help. <laughs> But we won't. Uh, we're gonna pass the buck over <laughs> to your husband. Yeah. Uh, so, Eric, tell us about your experience becoming a part of the body. Have, have you, like Tuesday, been a part of a church as long as you've been born again, and all that? Yeah, I, I came to the Lord um, February third, two thousand and one. Mm -hmm. um, that's after having not been a church regular church goer my, during my childhood. Um, so I had been to church a couple times growing up, but not enough to say I was a member of a church or really had an idea of what it was like to grow up in church or be in church right, or what to expect, what church should be like or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when I came, would you say you believed in God though? Oh yeah, I would say so. Okay, but no, no relationship, nothing like that. No, no. Okay. Uh, no, I was a heathen. <laughs> but <laughs> me too. Man. But when I when I came to the Lord. Um, that was one of the things, you know, I knew, I just, something in me, I knew the people that I had surrounded myself with, I had to separate from those people. Okay. And so one of my initial prayers was. Wait, 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 wait. I'm so sorry. That's so good. Don't forget your thought. But listen to what he's saying. The people that he was around, 
before joining a church, he had to get rid of those people. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the people that we surround ourselves with make or break us. Okay, mm -hmm. we become we are like the people that we hang with. And so being a part of a body, you need to be around people mm -hmm. that you can right. glean and become like. Yeah, so I, I was praying to God and I was asking God, give me some new friends. Mm -hmm. And you know, God connected me with a group of people mm -hmm. and we attended church together. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was, yeah, very vital, and yeah, I'm still in the church to this day. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But, and see, let me think what you're talking about being around like-minded people. Uh, zeal is contagious. No matter what, it's like, if you're interested in a certain thing with it's people, true. whether it's a ball team or whatever, people's zeal and excitement about that thing is contagious mm -hmm. to you. So when you get around people that are excited about it's the, the things of God... <laughs> Uh, we got first. We got the first pick this year. <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, So when you get around people that have like that that zeal for God, it's contagious. It's it's you, know, you can't really get that by being in a chat room or no, uh, you, you know commenting on somebody's you know yeah. social media posts. And and just like with that, I remember. When we were on campus ministry, like we all went to college together, going like that did something mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. because growing up, I grew up in church, mm -hmm. but as far as the youth and then being a young adult, me seeing and being around yeah. other young adults yeah. on fire yeah. for God, right. That was intriguing. That was I, I just wanted to come and just sit and just right. soak it in. Soak it in, you know, and we would have all these different events and we would pray together, we would fast together, we were doing together. all these things together, together, which caused us to grow. Touching touching and agree. Touching and agree. <laughs> they live in the same house, y'all. <laughs> but that with him saying that just made me think about how it was for me and having that campus yeah. ministry and being around and just just learning because I, I didn't know half the stuff all y'all did right. and so I was just sitting here just sitting right. and listening and just really excited right. about I'm the things of God it was like that for me too I, I used to be content you know I'm, I'm a, my, my business type of person where I would go about my day handling my business and let everybody else handle theirs. Mm -hmm. And I used to be that way until God connected me with some young people who were very evangelistic and mm -hmm. outreach-like. Mm -hmm. And as I joined up with people like that and saw people giving their lives to the Lord and joining mm -hmm. us and we growing as a ministry, right. um, that changed me and did something for me. Mm -hmm. And because I stepped out of just my own little Come world on. into... Um, the the body mentality. But so. even some of the words you use in connecting, joining, I mean these are together. Yeah, together. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is yeah. important right. because like with the scripture that you read yeah. that says forsaking out the assembly of yourself together, the word, the Greek word in the Bible that actually is translated as church yeah. means assembly. Mm. You know, and you can buy online and a beautiful cabinet from IKEA, say for instance. But until that thing is put together and all the pieces come together, it's, it's nice. you don't have it in its full glory yet. Right. And that's the way the church is. The church is an assembly. Right. So even though you can believe God in your home and you can believe God yeah, in your yeah. home, until we come together and we all assemble with our different gifts and abilities yeah. mm -hmm. and start working towards the vision of advancing the kingdom. Working not, together yeah. toward one vision. Yeah. Not your vision, your right. That's where the full right. glory is. God's vision. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. We all have a part to play. So, so I hope you guys are tracking us. And these are, you know, multiple points have been made. And you in your own life, I'm sure many of you bear witness with, you know, Tuesday's testimony, Eric's testimony, my testimony. Um, I want to look at this idea of the benefits of being a, an active member of a church. Because mm -hmm. um, you guys don't just attend church. You are active in your church. Mm -hmm. You've had, over the many years that you've been a part of church, you've done different things, been a part of different ministries. So... Could you talk a little bit, from whatever angle you want, about your involvement in church, in whatever capacity you want, and how that has benefited you and or others, how God's been able to use that? For me, my involvement 
in church opened up, made me recognize the gifts and the mm -hmm. callings that, that I have. You have. That mm -hmm. I have. Mm -hmm. That has caused me to even go out into the marketplace mm -hmm. to use those gifts. Mm -hmm. um, to reach other people. To reach, to reach other people. And mainly, you know, for me, I, I'm involved in children's ministry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I was a single mom growing up, didn't want didn't think about having kids, didn't really think about getting married or nothing. It was just me going out, just doing whatever. But then when I had a child, I knew that I, things had to change. Yeah. And I was, I, I felt like I was a very good mother right. in doing what I had to do because of watching my mother yeah. and how she was with us. And I got involved. I was just excited to be at church, wanting to be involved in something. So... Let me do children's church. Yeah, because it's familiar. It's for me. I got a kid. I can be with him, and we can teach him the Bible and stuff. And then from there, just me growing, not only as a mother, me growing as um, a teacher. A teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, just just the growth aspect of that, and then now being inside the school system and being able to use those tools from mm -hmm. the church. Not so much as Jesus, 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 right. but it is that same light that you say, right? And it's and and people. Um, I had my evaluation the other day, and they said Tuesday's presence, her peace, her joy is contagious. That's beautiful, you know what I'm saying? It's so true. they see that whatever it is on the inside of me, that yeah. that's contagious. When I'm with these kids at school. They may, I'm, I'm the only person that's probably ever hugged them yeah. that day. May I may I interject for a second? You you make a very good point. Tuesday, when what she's saying is when she was involved in children's ministry, she wasn't just babysitting. No, right. I mean that, no. that's easily done. You go no. and you sit with kids in Sunday school until church went on. You go get your watch every five minutes. That's one way to do it. No. But that's not what happened with you. You allowed um, God to use you to minister to, to the kids, and then you're right. being involved in God. Right. And what God's work is turned around and ministered to you. And not only that, mm -hmm. you guys know there is such an emphasis in the Bible about children. And Jesus himself talked about when you give a cup of cold water to a child. Mm -hmm. um, we see how, that the, the reward is so it's great. great. So great. Mm -hmm. And how Jesus treated the children, there are references to children um, being held in his bosom, and um, I don't think that anybody would argue um, that God has a, emphasizes in the Bible that children are unique, that they are special, that they are precious, and that they matter. Mm -hmm. And so while the ministry is happening upstairs, laying on the hands, and people getting preached to, and everybody want to run around, and sister back it up doing her doo doo doo, -doo you know what I'm saying? It's all good. But then what was happening yeah. downstairs in the nursery and those other classrooms, in God's eyes, is not less important. And she was a part of something so important to God. And that, again, is not just babysitting. And that's, so those children being ministered to, I remember being in children's church. I didn't get born again until I was a teenager. But when I got born again, I, I did a whole lot of this. My eyes wide open, just checking. These people were different. I never seen anything like it. That's why I got born again. Their joy, their peace, their the things that you were talking about, that light, that glow that you had. And as a child, because 13 year kid, hello, that ministered to me and it changed my life. And just showing up every day to children's church and being that smiling face and giving that cupcake, playing in the play doh, reading the scriptures. Yeah does so much for each child mm -hmm. and she won't even know the half well, just, there'll, be, there'll be adults coming up to her i remember you were my teacher i was in your church for two weeks and you said this and you know mm -hmm. you stick with people mm -hmm. that happens when we come together did yeah. i cover up something you were saying i did yeah. Okay. You did, but I can't remember. But yeah, I do that. Carry we'll back. You I, 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 yeah, purpose. Like what you're talking about gives us a sense of purpose, right. a sense of worth, mm -hmm. a sense of value that mm -hmm. we have something to offer mm -hmm. other than just listening to a man of God on the, on, or a woman of God. And then going back home yeah, and just you know, dealing with our own daily life. And we're not supposed That's to, it's right. not supposed yeah. to be about <laughs> this person. You know, we are the body of Christ. Yeah, we. And you don't really get a chance to see until you start getting active and involved, like how your part is an important part. Yeah, you know what I'm of the work of God Essential. across the board. Yeah. Yeah, some people wouldn't even some people might think it's blasphemous to think of themselves in, in the way that he just said that so easily. 
I have a part in God's plan. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You, know, you read the Bible. <laughs> well, and that's the whole point of coming to church. God has given this man to help teach and equip the rest of the body to go out for the work, for the work right. of the ministry. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? And so for me, I have a part now. I, I see children's ministry as the rudder of the ship ah. that what helps make things go for upstairs because in my mind I'm thinking about the outcast coming out coming in or somebody just coming in from prison or whatever and their their kids are coming in mm -hmm. these people need the word yeah nope, and no so without no mm -hmm. distractions mm -hmm. me I don't care what it's gonna take I can have that child scream for the whole four three hours however long That's and I will <laughs> <laughs> To church and he was I had to make sure that he was good it was his nap time mm. so that I could sit and focus or making sure oh, that he was but because there was a distraction I couldn't really listen because I'm tending to him okay so I'm vicariously putting myself in their place like no this isn't yeah. gonna happen for you mm. for me that baby, don't worry. So if he cries, daddy can sit upstairs if he cries, he cries. His ministry, I'll be, don't get ministered to. That if you don't want him crying, I'll come get you. But I don't have no problem with him screaming and crying. He will be fine. Yeah. And so for me, I feel like that that's helping and that's comforting. And even when they don't cry, just the stuff that they're learning. But, but when, when parents feel their kids are safe, yeah. That's then the point. That's, that's the, the point. key thing. When mm -hmm. parents feel like their kids are safe in this church and they can go upstairs and they're receiving, that that in itself is gonna mm -hmm. want them to cut to come back because now not only what I'm getting, my children are getting and our house is gonna be a whole lot better. That's so good. So that's so good. So um I hope that this discussion is helping someone out there and you know I don't I think it's important for Christians that we as the body of Christ um we don't we don't buy everything someone's selling okay we don't um get shoved and pushed around by a bully uh like a kid on the playground and we just take it there's a time as much as it's in you live peaceably with all men but then there's also a time when you have to know who you are and and whose you are and what God has called you to and the law of God versus the opinions of man. And I say that not to be contentious, not to debate, but to bring a point. You have to know these things. And so if someone tells you, oh, just stay at home, do Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi the service, the preacher can preach. You need to understand that there's so much more to the picture and you need to understand the value to the assembly. Otherwise, it can very easily be taken from you. And, and oh well, you know, no loss, no foul. Um, but that is not the case. And so we as believers have to know these things, okay? I know what church has done for me. I know what being the church has done for me. And I know that it's not okay to just say, that, well, I'm the church, not the building. And therefore, I don't need to come together as a body. Listen, when the Bible says, I wrote this down while you were talking. <laughs> We are a body. Mm -hmm. A body has parts. It has, I have a head, I have ears, I have limbs, I have, you know, legs, toes. And at any point when these parts don't come together, then I'm dead. Is that does that make sense? That's good. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what the Bible says. It says that we are a body. Mm -hmm. We are we are individual parts, but those individual parts have to come together to make up the body. And it is important. There's so much that we draw from being in the presence of one another. So I'm going to leave this to you all. If there's any closing um, statements or points that you want to make, if not, we all know that I can talk enough for all of us. Um, but go ahead and make any last points that you might want to make before we close. I just wanted to say, you know, Christianity and being a, a believer is, is about having a relationship with God, number one, mm -hmm. but your life experience. And... You can do online college, you know, yeah. where you, if you're just focusing on getting your degree, you can do all your classes online, but you didn't have a college experience. Mm. And we don't want to just be people that just have, you know, spiritual knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we want to have that experience. Knowledge. And there's certain, yeah, uh, our Christian experience, our godly experience, our spiritual experience 
And there's some things you're just not going to experience mm -hmm. until you're a part of a group. Until yeah. you are in that, you know, in college, when you join an organization or an on-campus organization or group, that enhances your, you play a sport, you, you are involved some kind of way with people that also are attending school. Yeah. And when you meet up with other believers who are um, serving God, seeking God with you, and you team up with them, <laughs> then you are enhancing your own experience. It's true. We are people of men, we, we remember experiences mm -hmm. in life and a lot of those experiences are tied to the people that we were around, mm -hmm. like, you know, the, the encounters we had with mm -hmm. the individuals. I mean, God's wisdom, and I'm not going to run too long here, but God's wisdom, a lot of times we see it in the Word, is not, it's not just His commands and laws. It's wisdom, like circumcision, for instance, has been medically proven to be yeah, yeah. The, the healthiest way, yeah, you know, yeah. for children. <clears throat> and it's healthy for us to have human interaction. Yeah. yeah. We, you need know, we need to. Well, just like a baby needs that initial nurturing, nurture, that yeah. touch. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, if you were going through what you were going through and you heard a word that really ministered to you, who's going to sit down with you, talk to you, and walk me through, nurture you through that, give yes. you a hug, and tell right. you it's going to be okay? Right. You right. know, I, I can't feel that. You're going to after a while. I can feel that. I can you watch. I can feel that right there. I can't. You know, and I can't. I, I need different. this. I, I need to see your face. I need to touch. I need to. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know. So I just. You know. People. People. They may not say, but people really need that. We do. You know. What I'm saying that, and and you, and you can see it just when you go out. Just me. I. That's the first thing that I want to do is just give you a hug. You know what I'm saying? I like that, but you, I still I said, it. I was like, I'll be the first thing out the door when church is over. I'll be like, hey, amen, peace. And I'll be out. Let me tell you, That's being out of church, <laughs> being out of church has made such a difference. I don't care about not going to work. Hey, still getting paid, party. But not going to church is it's just yeah. weird. It's wrong. Right. It's not right. I, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go, go to, the to the house of the Lord. Lord. I know we are the church. I know we are the house of God, you know. But there's something about going to the place. We are. We meet. Not I am. Yeah. We are. But in, in, in we you are being healed. the church, yeah. is it, what what are you doing as a church, what yeah. what is what is your definition of church when you say I am the church? Right. You right. know what I'm saying? So you know That's we gotta two. think about that. If you're if you saying that I am the church, okay, so what are you doing mm -hmm. as the church? If it's not the building, you right. know what I'm saying? S didn't do that. Yeah. So um okay. well, we're gathered, guys. We are. Yeah, three and three. Look at that. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay, guys. Well, there it is. That's our opinion on put. Um, you have social media? We put it up. Is your Instagram, <laughs> is your Instagram public? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we have social media. We'll put it out there or email or something. If anybody wants to reach out and ask questions, we're here for you. <laughs> if you need prayer, call 502. 597-HELP. That's 502-597-4357. Where the word of the king is. There <laughs> is God bless it. Bless it. <laughs> Thank you for being on my channel and for loving all the people. We love you and uh, we'll see you next time.